does. But this time, not for confrontation. This vast procession was on its way to the funeral of a 30-year-old man shot dead in yesterday's riots. It passed smoke rising from the burning ruins of the ruling party's Democratic Party headquarters. It is a huge swathe of emotion. 24 hours ago, many of these people were throwing rocks at the police. Today, they're declaring that Vlora belongs to them and not the government of President Sali Barisha. Opposition leaders arrived later. Albanians had been gullible to invest in pyramid schemes, but they were told a corrupt government had encouraged them. Those listening seemed determined to resist any attempt at imposing martial law here. If the army will be at Vlora, it will be happening many things. Many, many people will be killed. There were no police on the streets. At their headquarters, which had been under siege in the rioting, the few officers remaining refused to talk to me and became aggressive. There were a few troops ordered to mount a guard outside the city hall. They promptly agreed to leave, though. The government would have to order a major military clampdown to regain control here. Andrew Simmons, News at 10, Laura. And our diplomatic editor, Robert Moore, has been monitoring events today in the Albanian capital, Tirana, and joins us now from the city's central square. Robert, what's the mood like in the Albanian capital tonight? Well, it is relatively quiet here. Certainly it is quiet. The secret police are visibly in control of the streets, although the opposition is calling for a major rally here tomorrow morning, one I think the security forces are very likely to break up. But right across Albania, people are directly blaming the government for both profiting from and also promoting these fraudulent investment schemes. So I think a great deal of betrayal towards the government, uh, although it must be said that the opposition as well was involved. And so I think what it's really done is expose the extraordinary level of corruption right across Albanian society. Given that, has there been any talk today about what the government might do next? Well, I think there are signs tonight that the ruling Democratic Party is deeply split over the issue. The Parliament is still debating whether to approve emergency measures. Diplomats say, have been telling me tonight, that their main concern is the stability of Albania. They say that although this is an internal crisis, there is, of course, significant popular unrest in Bulgaria and also, of course, in Serbia. And therefore, it does serve to underline the political instability right across the Balkan region. Robert Moore, thank you very much indeed. It came as no big surprise, but Woolwich Building Society on a mission to make space-age technology even better. They're upgrading the telescope so that scientists can see further into the universe than anyone has done before. Our science editor, Lawrence McGinty, explains what they'll be doing. Ignition and liftoff. Discovery now on its way to service NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. It's the most expensive MOT in the world. It's half a billion pounds to send seven astronauts on the shuttle to repair and upgrade the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble was first serviced four years ago and since then has produced stunning images of objects deep in space. Then astronauts corrected basic problems with the telescope. On the latest mission they'll do much more, replacing old instruments and installing a new infrared heat camera that can see deeper into space. We're hoping that the advancements uh, that we give the telescope will allow it to, to uh, you know, look farther back into time and uh, with uh, higher resolution and being able to uh, reveal more of the mysteries of God's creation. Astronomers at the Jodrell Bank Radio Telescope hope to achieve the same end, but with different means, with a satellite launched in seven hours' time from Japan. To see better, astronomers need bigger telescopes. By using the Japanese radio dish from space, coupled with dishes on Earth, including Jodrell Bank, radio signals from deep in space are combined by computers to mimic a huge telescope three times as big as the Earth. It's something like a thousand times better than that of the Hubble Space Telescope. And it's sufficient to resolve something like the size of a football at the distance of the moon. From space and from the ground, astronomers are seeing deeper into the universe, the better to unlock its secrets. Lawrence McGinty, News at 10. More of today's news coming up, including the British talent sweeping the boards and this...